Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Sports Show right here on Smash FM here on a lockdown Wednesday here in Melbourne. Let's go up to our friends who are unfortunately also in lockdown, um, just like us down here in Melbourne. We're going up to uh, Sydney in particular and speak with technically the champions uh, in 2021 <laughs> in the Premier League competition in the Opens and also in the under-23s because at the end of their season, they both finish on top of the ladder um, after uh, 11 rounds. And, of course, we've got three very special guests joining us right now to tell us a bit about it from the North Shore United team. Thanks, uh, all three, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah. Well, I will get all three to introduce yourselves and tell us, obviously, what teams uh, you all play for within the North Shore United uh, Premier League teams. So, hi, I'm Millie, and I play for the North Shore United Opens team. So a really great team to be a part of. I've played with them for the last five years and it's a fantastic group of girls. I'm Emily. I also play in the Opens team. I like the championship title. That's fantastic. Let's keep that going. <laughs> um, yeah, been there for five years now. Um, I'm Ella. I play for the under 23. This is my third year. And I also was named as a training partner for Opens. Unfortunately, your season had to come to a close due to the long, long lockdown that you're in right now. Um, but I guess the positive thing is, Techly won the premiership this year uh, in 2021. Obviously, finishing on top and well, and well clear on top of the ladder in both the 23s and also in the Opens. Tell us about the year uh, or the season that was prior to lockdown. Yeah, so for the Opens, it was a really great season. We had uh, Kim Green come on board as our coach this year, which was fantastic. And she teamed up with our assistant coach, Lisa Duncan, who helped us win last year's premiership. And I think the leadership from Kim and Lisa has just been fantastic. And a key thing of the open season has really been consistency. We were able to get out there on court every week and deliver high quality performances, which was great because we were playing some really tough quality opposition. And I think the consistency for us showed in the result we were able to have at the top of the ladder there. Um, yeah, with the under 23, it was a bit of a rough season with a lot of injuries and a lot of people like illness so we had a lot of people coming in and out of our season which was a bit hard to adapt to but we achieved it and all of us like strive through it and we all yeah played to the best of our ability. You know you know you have physically um, got obviously the, the achievement of winning a premiership um, I guess how good was it to finish on top and uh, and you know proved to be uh, the champions team uh, throughout uh, 2021. It was awesome, um, particularly, you know, with the start of the season that we had not knowing who our coach was going to be and then Kim uh, just absolutely slotted in there seamlessly. Um, yeah, and then to stay so consistent, um, being now having that bigger target on our back, having won the year before. Um, yeah, it was just awesome. And we were in such a role. And to have both teams as well in that top position um, and consistently there as well, um, yeah, it was incredible. Tell us a bit about your amazing coaches. Obviously, we mentioned Kim Green already uh, in uh, in this interview, but tell us a bit about your amazing coaches in your respective teams. So for the Opens, we're so lucky to be coached by Kim and Lisa, who are fantastic leaders, both on and off the court. Kim just brings her wealth of knowledge and experience across many, many, many years of playing at an elite level. So it was so great to hear from her about, you know, the ups and downs of elite netball, what to do when things are going your way and also what to do when things aren't going your way. Being a mid-court specialist, it was cool to hear some of her tips and tricks. As a defender myself, it was nice to hear how I could, you know, overcome some of those tips and tricks as her mid-court specialty. But it was really cool to hear from her. And our fabulous assistant coach, Lisa, she has so much knowledge. She's so aware of every tactical situation and how to go about this. We have a couple of set plays on court down in our attacking end that really work very well thanks to their leadership. Yeah, with the under-23s, we have Colin Sarah. Cole, our head coach, has been our coach for the under-23s for three years now. She's shown her, like, how like her leadership is improving and how well she can just coach a team through like all all the three different years we're improving 
And with Sarah, she's a, like she's new to this NSU team, but she fit in so nicely and her like positivity just like brightens up everyone's day. I know that all three are captains, um, one way or the other, um, in your respective teams. What does that mean to all three? From the opens, um, I think we all just have such experience that, yes, while we do have our captains, everyone is a leader within their own right. Um, and really for us, I think within an issue culture, that means setting an example um, and everyone putting in the one percenters and the work on and off the court and just, yeah, setting that example. Yeah, like um, what Em said, it's just a great opportunity to like help others bring like their fire to the game and just help others see like their how like they can achieve in netball and how they can just yeah be the best they can be. Yeah, I think the leadership as well is shown as Em was saying off the court as well. I know NSU as a club love to assist our junior clubs such as Norse and Karingai by going to the junior rep carnivals, showing our support there and also um, doing our um, coaching clinics where we work with the up and coming players from Norse and Karingai to show leadership and then show them a good example for working towards this elite netball. Before I actually uh, ask my next question, uh, obviously we've got another very special guest uh, joining us right now from the Opens team. Of course, uh, they're the, uh, the defending champions in the North Shore United, and I'll get her to introduce herself now. And and obviously, uh, I was I have I'll get your view on uh, the amazing season for the Opens. Considering I've already got uh, the other two answers from M and uh, and Millie. Yeah, sure. So um, my name's Sarah. I'm part of the Opens team. Um, I play goal attack, goal shooter, so down the attack end. Um, the girls had a fantastic season. Obviously, I wasn't part of it this year. I actually uh, ruptured my ACL in the preseason um, in a match down on the South Coast. So that was a bit unfortunate for me, but um, it was a pleasure to be able to sit on the sideline and watch the girls. Um, Tell us the co players in your respective teams that did an, uh, had an awesome season and you can't include yourselves or each other. Oh, that's a good one. I think I would have to say in our midcourt, Eliza, our fantastic wing attack slash centre. She is just so consistent. She works well in attack and defence. You can always count on her to get an intercept when we're down. She's so good at coming out of nowhere and getting the ball. So her skill and consistency off the court has been fantastic. And I'll choose another attacking player, even though I'm a defender. But Sabina, our goal shooter, has just gone from strength to strength this year. She is very versatile in the circle. She holds her space well. She can get on the move. And her accuracy of shots, as well as her rebounds, have been fantastic. So if we ever turn the ball over in the defender's end, we're very grateful to have Eliza and Sabina down there in the attacking end. Yeah, I would agree with you, Mills. I also think... On the defensive end, M Nez, I reckon you've had a pretty good season this year. I think your combination as well with with Ash has been pretty good, and with Shah um, in that circle. Um, so yeah, I would say you've also had a cracker of a year, um, and I think you've been building as well over the past couple of years. So um, yeah. yeah, I I think the person that jumped to mind was Sabi um, Savina. Yeah, she's just such a stronghold down there. Um, and can absolutely hold her own, and she just takes the hits week after week after week and doesn't complain at all. Um, oh, yeah, look, who else do we have? I thought Maddie had a brilliant season too. Um, just looking like last year compared to this year, it was just a whole other level for her. Um, and, I, yeah, we got to see some behind the scenes of the extra training that I know she was putting in as well, and I just think that absolutely pays off in the end. So, yeah, I think our team just has such depth to it, and... Um, just so seamlessly are we able to bring people on and off um, and not miss a beat. And I think that's a real strength of ours. Yeah, I was just, just to add to that, I agree. Um, I reckon, um, I think that just, I feel, I feel like we've almost listed everybody in the team there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that just goes to show that no matter who's on the court, they're doing their job um, um, and they're doing it at 100%. And I think that's probably uh, key to our success, um, if I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah for the under 23s i'll say Kristen. she's a new like player into the team but she's just a beast she just gets intercepts from i don't know where 
she just always there and she's a very like has strong leadership skills so she um just supports everyone in like her on and off court which is great I also have to say another defender which is Erin um because she's she's just amazing I inspire like she's inspires me just to do stuff she like can jump over balls. Actually, I have to add on as well. L, you came up and played um a few times for us, more than a few times, and you absolutely held your own in that um mid courting position. So, yeah, I can't remember who we were playing, but we we're on court three, and it was tight, and you just came on and fitted in seamlessly, um and just absolutely worked your butt off, and it really paid off, and it was awesome to watch. So yeah, <laughs> thank you. Very cool as well. <laughs> I was just going to say that's also really exciting to have the 23s be able to come up and play in the opens. Um, I think that's, yeah, I think that's pretty, pretty exciting for them and also keeps us on our toes. <laughs> so, yeah, no, you did well. Elle. <laughs> Thank you. It wasn't for the lockdown. Obviously, the 23s would have just had their grand final um, last night and obviously the opens would have obviously had your grand final today which we all assume you would have both got there anyway, uh, <laughs> the way the season was travelling. Um, I guess, did you ever thought when you finished your last game in round 11, uh, which was about two months ago now, um, that you, like, you were never going to be playing again for the remainder of the year? I certainly didn't. I thought we would be back. Um, just having the experience we did last year, um, yeah, I was surprised when the season was cancelled and it didn't go back. Um, yeah, and disappointed as well. But at the same time, like when we got the, um, you know, when we all heard we were going into lockdown, Kim was on the ball with a training program for us and so was Adrian and Lisa. And, um, yeah, the girls didn't miss a beat. We continued our Zoom sessions. We continued our training. So, yeah, even in that uncertainty, we – it was never – oh, okay, cool, well, we're just going to take a week off. Everyone just kept up their training as if it was going to go back. So how did uh, all four of you get involved in netball and why did you choose it? Yeah, great question. I got involved in netball. I didn't play, actually, the first couple of years of netters, only when a friend at my primary school had a spare spot in their team and they just said, hey, come along and do it. And I thought, why not? And then I've been playing it ever since. So yeah, like Mill, I have played um, netball since I was in netters. Now it's called Net Set Go, um, but played since a young girl. And I think for me, I have always played purely because of um, I've loved the sport, but also I've made so many good friends over the years as well. So that's always enticed me back. Yeah. And for me, same deal as well. Um, you know, all my school friends were playing netball at the time. So mum and I just wandered down to the local courts and just signed up for the local team. And I just, yeah, got started and have never looked back, really. Same with me. I just started very young. I think I was five years old. Did it because my sisters did it. But then, yeah, now it's a big love of mine, which is great. Who was your local junior netball club or association? And do you ever go back there to help out? My junior club was St Ives, shout out to them. Um, I have previously coached a few teams for St Ives. I haven't over the past two to three years, but I have um, coached a few of their young ones. Um, and then I guess uh, if you come out a little bit, my sort of association was Karingai. And I think I coached uh, one of the development teams, which was amazing. Um, yeah, I think it was the under 12s development team. So I did do, um, I did, sorry, coach one of those teams as well. Me, my um, junior club was Willoughby United. So I played down there at the Northern Suburbs courts for Willoughby, which was great. And then my local rep association was a Northern Suburbs rep netball. And I've gone back there, been involved with a couple of trials and selections for them, which was such, so important for the girls. And also a couple of development teams, similar to Sarah, I, I did the 12s development team, which was, it's such a good age of girls that are really inspiring to be, you know, at that next level of elite netball. So it was really great to be involved there. I played my juniors at Brower Rebels, which unfortunately <laughs> I think they have now merged with the other Brower club. So the beautiful Brower Rebels. Brower Rebels. <laughs> so 
the purple lycra bodysuit is no more. What a shame. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I still, um, I'm in touch with my junior coach who was a coach there and is now coaching at my reps association. Um, and I'm able to team up with him and do bits and pieces and um, yeah, would always love to do more. Yeah, I, my club was Hornsby Heights. Um, we looked like little carrots. Um, <laughs> um, and and Korean guy is like the association. And then this year I did coaching for a state age team. I was the assistant coach, which was a good opportunity. And I really enjoyed it, which is great. I love the name Rebels uh, for a netball team. Uh, it's so <laughs> 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 Uh, now I have to ask what position or for you play on the court and if you had a preferred position we'd like to convince your coaches to put you next year where would that be so I play sorry I'm just having to think of my preferred position <laughs> can be anywhere on the court um so I think I might have already answered this but I play down the attack ends so I'm goal attack goal shooter um, well, look, if I, if I could be a free range chook and roam across the court, I probably would um, give defence a crack, but uh, I don't know if Kimmy, Kimmy G would let me down. <laughs> I think I should probably just stay down the attack end. <laughs> yeah, my positions, I play wing defence and goal defence, so the defending positions. I've never had to think about what position I would play because I've always, even from when I was younger, been right down there in defence. I think no one else wanted to play goalkeeper, so I put my hand up to do it. But I think it probably, as Sarah said, it would be interesting to go down the other end and, you know, yeah. maybe try, try run around and see how it feels to be a goal attack for one game. I can't promise that my goals would ever go in the uh -huh. hoop. However, I think I'd be able to feed the ball in nicely to someone else. <laughs> I agree, Mills. I reckon you could do a good job down there. You could put up a few shots. Bit Thank of you. Maybe, maybe a few air balls. <laughs> you have the baseline. I grew up playing centre and running around the midcourt when I was a little shorty, but um, yeah, now I'm stuck, <laughs> stuck under the post. GKGD. Um, I'm forever chasing the goal shooter bib because I just love to get the benefit of the doubt on some of those contact calls, but that's fine. <laughs> Be nice. Um, yeah, no, I don't think Kimmy G would be <laughs> able to handle that one. I think Lisa would have a bit of a breakdown as well. <laughs> Those stats, all that stat. How about you, Ella? Um, well, I'm a mid quarter, so the wing attack centre. I always wanted to be a shooter, but I don't think that'll ever happen. Cole, like even in practice games, like Cole just doesn't even let me touch the shoot a bit. Which is a bit oh. sad. It's all right. It's all right. I'll get over it. <laughs> it's oh. a glory spot. Who doesn't want it? Yeah. Right? <laughs> it is. Everyone to take that shot. Wow. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully your coach is uh, watching this um, and keeping that in mind next time. <laughs> Uh, what does the sport of netball mean to all four of you, especially being then the best club uh, in New South Wales, in the North Shore United? Yeah, really good question. For me, netball has brought a lot of um, like excitement and drive to my life. I love the challenge that it brings, whether that's, you know, on the court, um, coming up against a really tough opposition and trying to work them out or or whether that's off the court, you know, doing some of those preseason running sessions, which we all love. It's definitely quite challenging, but I think it just brings a really good sense of um, community to my life. And also the friends that I've been able to make and share the court with are really fantastic. I love going to training, not because I love netball, but I also really am very close with the girls that I get to spend my most of my time with. Yeah, for me as well, it's just it's just a massive community um, and the girls, you know, both in the um, 23s and the Opens, no matter what kind of day we've had, we show up at training and we show up for each other and um, we just set our minds on the task and give it our best. Um, yeah, and that's just a huge part of how I'm able to just go about every day and look forward to every week, waking up on a Thursday, having one the night before is the best. <laughs> um, yeah, and just the challenge of it as well. We may have won, you know, last year and we'll um on fine form this year as well but that was you know that was at least four years in the making 
um, to be able to put that off and put that together. So the challenges that come with it have absolutely just shaped, you know, who I am and who we all are. And we persevered through that, which was just awesome. Well said, girls. Um, just to add to that, because I think you guys have said that um, pretty nicely, but I think it's also really special um, that we are, and I probably also speak on behalf of the 23s as well and you Mots, but, um, you know, we are such good friends in both the respective teams. And I think it's really nice how then when we're on court, we are really competitive as well and we're playing for each other. And I think that's been something that over the past couple of years has really stood out to me, how that we're all really good friends off the court. We, we work hard at training. And then when it comes to, to games, um, we are really competitive. So um, I think that has actually also been a huge key to our success. So, yeah. And I, I assume, obviously, that's the same for the 23s as well, Mots. Am I right? Yeah. Like you said, like, especially me, I'm a very competitive person and netball has allowed me to show my determination mm. and, like, hard work throughout the years. But, like, with all the 23s, we've created, a, like, a new family with the Opens and we're trying to, like, ex I I don't know, just create a whole community and like be there for each other no matter what, which is great. Oh, I think just spending so much time together as we do every week to be able to, um, yeah, have the culture that we do. Um, it's just so uplifting. And you're not only are we, you know, being competitive with each other and developing our skills, but we're also just really enjoying our netball and enjoying each other's, um, you know, company and time together as well. Now, what would be your advice to people that should get involved in netball once you're out of lockdown, um, and especially, uh, you know, to get involved in 2022 and supporting the North Shore uh, United team? I'm hoping we have a couple more exhibition matches. Um, I'm sure all the other girls in the other associations will be itching to get back on court. So, um, yeah, some exhibition matches are surely in the works. Um, so do come along to those as well. Um, what else have we got going? No doubt we'll do some more clinics too. So I don't think we got to too many of the clinics this year uh, due to the whole lockdown and, and COVID situation. So I think that was a bit unfortunate. I think our, um, obviously our, our clubs being both Norths and Karinga missed out on some of that stuff. So yeah. um, a bit disappointing for them and obviously disappointing for us as well. So yeah, hopefully that will return. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, and hopefully for next season, I mean, we're really lucky having each of those games on Wednesday night live streamed. So if you're not able to get out there and watch, you can watch from the comfort of your couch, from your bed, from your own home. So, you know, I'm sure everyone, as the girls have been saying, are, is really missing their netball. So it would be really cool to have the support from everyone tuning into the live stream when we're able to get back out there again in 2022. Yeah, no excuses. Yeah, no excuses at all. <laughs> And I believe this is the first year we did have every, um, correct me if I'm wrong, every game streamed mm -hmm. thanks to Clutch. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome too. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah, I also have to say, like, even at the clinics, like, just make sure you have a go. And, like, everyone is welcome. And, yeah, just have fun. It's a – netball is meant to be a fun sport, so just have a go. Mm. I agree, Mike. We often get, like, a handful of, of young kids who have never actually even played the sport or never mm -hmm. played sport in general. Um, so yeah, there's a wide range of, of abilities, um, which is, which is good to see challenging for us, but also challenging for them as well. Now let's finish up with cool lighthearted questions about your teammates. I know it was two months ago since you last were, were on the court, which it, the first one is who had the most embarrassing moment on the court this season and what was it? I don't know if you could say it's embarrassing. But I'm just going to throw Hayley Wilson under the bus. I think you interviewed her last year. A uh, bit of a rolling sub mix-up. Um, I think she came on the court, correct me if I'm wrong, girls, too soon or too late, and it was a delayed call. Um, and I think we had practice that at training. So there, there she goes, <laughs> under the bus, straight under the bus. <laughs> Yeah, that's such a good one, Sarah. I'm definitely going to throw M under the bus on this one. Um, M loves a good bounce pass off the baseline throw in. And we did so many bounce passes that didn't work that our coach Kim actually had to revoke our bounce pass license. So none of the defenders on the court were allowed to throw a bounce pass. We had to leave that to the attackers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and the, can't forget the overhead passes either. They were revoked. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I think for the under 23s, it just must be Erin like falling over every single game. <laughs> she just hits on deck. Like, I don't know how. Oh, she just long lives. Yeah. <laughs> that must be why. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Little pins. <laughs> not, a lot of, not a lot of um ground contact, maybe a bit wobbly. <laughs> Poor Erin. We love her though. <laughs> oh, Erin's gonna Erin's gonna love this. Uh, <laughs> I hope they all listen. <laughs> oh, I know, I know most of them do. Um, yeah. <laughs> who's the comedian, the best singer, the best dancer on the team? A few comedians. Everyone thinks they're funny, but yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but are we really? I don't know. Yeah. And, and you're the best dancer. Let's get to that. Stop it. You want to give us a preview? Or... Mm. <laughs> I do love a good pre-game boogie. That is that is a lot of fun. Yeah, you're known to wear your headphones into the internet ball central. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm all it's about it. It works. It's I mean, business. <laughs> I look serious, but I'm really just listening to ABBA or something. <laughs> I'm trying to think of singers. I picked up Em Moore's headphones one week and she was listening to country, so. <laughs> yeah, she likes a country. She Whatever likes works, country. works. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Median. Oh, look, Fongy comes up with some golden lines. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's not give her too much credit, though. She probably likes to think she's funny. She'll listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she will. <laughs> singer. Do we have a singer? I, I'm trying to think. I don't know if we have a singer. I think people like to think they can sing. You know, we, yeah. we put our headphones in and we sing and we all have our different genres that we like. But once you take the headphones out, the sound actually isn't as good as you think it was. <laughs> Mots, do you have any singers? I don't think we have singers, but Jamie is like a musician. She plays like double bass, piano. She plays a lot of instruments. So she's like the most musical sound person. (laughs) On that, actually, if we're going to go on instruments, Sabby um, in The Goal Shooter, we were talking about prior, she plays the accordion, which is amazing. Um... So yeah, we've had a few laughs about that, but she's actually very good at that. And I think she also plays the piano, if she's if I remember correctly as well. It didn't surprise go. me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do either of you have a pre-game superstition or ritual? I think, well, I've got a few music might be one of them, but <laughs> already the last question. Probably music for me. I'm myself and Maddie, who's also in our team, are really big Taylor Swift fans. So we just listen to anything Taylor Swift, which some people might think isn't really a pump up tune, but we, <laughs> we think it is. So it would be that. And probably my other one is whenever I tape my ankles, I always tape my left one first. Oh. Yeah. Left shoe, then right shoe. There's no other way to do it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I do my laces in a special way, and if they're not done that way, then I'm just in a state. So yeah, <laughs> two two double knots. It's the way to go. Mm-hmm. I am um, actually. Oh, I hope this is. I hope this is allowed on here and appropriate. I am um, actually wear certain underwear for the game and sports bra. Otherwise, it's just bad juju. So. For me, it's got to be certain ones and certain socks. So, um, yeah, that's probably my little superstition as opposed to pre-grade ritual. But, yes, if my... Yeah, I'm like you, Sarah. I got, I've got, like, the same sport, like, being a half, like, sport bra I have to wear. Like, I have to search the whole house to, like, wear it. Yeah. But, yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's one of mine. Nice. Oh, coffee. Coffee and food, so essential. Coffee well, and banana. Done. You drink that though right prior to stepping on the court. So you could down that in five minutes before the first whistle. I couldn't do that. I would be sick. So <laughs> that's definitely one for you. <laughs> one for you, Nick. <laughs> Give it a go, Reg. You never know. Oh, it could be a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone on the team into their TikToks? 
Hey, Eliza. Woody. <laughs> Eliza in the Oceans team loves it. She won't admit it, but she'll, she's part of any TikTok that's trending. She'll be able to name it. <laughs> and probably do the dance as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also say Millie Roach as well. She's on the TikTok as well. Yes. Do you have an account, Elle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's plug it right here and now and we'll just, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think I mean, she's already self-promoted up. already this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Plug> <laughs> All for you. Thank you so much for giving up your time to join us tonight. Obviously, it would have been the night for the Open uh, Grand Final uh, tonight. And obviously, uh, well, would have, hopefully the 23s would have already celebrated their premiership. But everyone was t- uh, obviously alive from last night. But uh, obviously, best of luck going into 2022. And um, hopefully, next year I'll be coming up to Sydney and obviously hopefully watch you all play uh, next season. Yeah, and you can uh, you can have a shot of limoncello when we win the grand final next year. <laughs> okay. I hope you like it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks for having us. It was Thanks great. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. And that is, well, technically, the 2021 uh, Premiership teams of the North Shore United uh, <laughs> in the Open Premier League because both teams finishing on top in the 23s and the Open in the Premier League competition. Because you want to support the mighty uh, North Shore United team for next year, because we'll put all the details up on, on their games uh, once the season gets underway next year. There's more on the Smashport show right after this. Don't go away here on the 10th year celebration. <laughs>